Uh, this is the Mayberry Deputy, and you're listening to Two Chairs No Waiting. <laughs> it's big. <laughs> Chairs No Waiting, episode number 415, George Lindsay UNA Film Festival. Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you each week by the fine folks over at WeaversDepartmentStore.com. Drop by over at Weavers and check out the Johnny Lightning, Andy Griffith Show squad cars they've got. Or maybe you'd enjoy a Barney Sidecar Company sweatshirt. If it's Andy Griffith Show related, check out WeaversDepartmentStore.com and pick up something. Two Chairs No Waiting is also brought to you by donations by listeners just like you. Executive producer of episode number 415 is Bob Mundy, our Briscoe Darling tribute artist, at least one of them. There's there's several that do it, but Bob is uh, great to support the show, and I thank him. And I am Alan Newsom, your host for Two Chairs No Waiting. It's great to have you here with me once again. I want to thank the Mayberry Deputy for kicking the show off there at the beginning. And uh, and I want to thank you for being here with us. Now, we're going to be talking about the George Lindsay UNA Film Festival. The reason we're talking about that is it's coming up this weekend as I record. It's March the uh, 2nd through the 4th of 2017. This is the 20th annual George Lindsay UNA Film Festival. Wow. 20 20 years of this film festival, and uh, we'll be celebrating that. Uh, I've been invited to come over on uh, Saturday night. I'm going to get to say a few words. My only problem is I'm used to talking here for uh, 15 to 20 minutes to you guys every week, and I only have three to five minutes to say so many wonderful things that I have to say about George Lindsay. Uh, The things I say aren't wonderful. It's him that I want to talk about and say the wonderful things about him. He, uh, he was a treasure. It was, uh, this, this film festival was definitely something near and dear to his heart. So I wanted to tell you guys about it. As I realized, here we are in episode number 415, and I've never uh, really given you any information about this podcast, about the, here on the podcast, about the film festival. We've we've covered it in the past because I've done some events over there and uh, had episodes of the podcast, uh, like when I was on a panel session there at the UNA uh, at UNA for the film festival. I think it was on Southern Humor. There's a podcast episode or two about that. Uh, where uh, we had several people in that uh, panel discussion. It was a lot of fun. I was honored to get to do that. Uh, but uh, and then there was a, another event. It wasn't really the film festival; it was related. But when or- Ernest Borgnine was uh, there in Florence to dedicate the uh, George Lindsay Theater, uh, and I think is the right name of it there in uh, there in UNA. So anyway, there's been a lot of talk about things around the Lindsay Film Festival, but uh, we have not talked about it specifically. So let's start off. I want to start off uh, back at the beginning because back uh, I, I have been able to, to find these things. I found a press release from UNA. It was from the Office of University Relations, and it was Bill Jarnigan. He was the director of that office. He sent out a press release back on December the 17th, 1997, and it said, UNA announces the George Lindsay TV and Film Festival for April 1998. Wow, amazing. Entertainer George Lindsay, University of North Alabama President Robert Potts, and UNA Assistant Professor of Journalism Bobby Hurt announced today, back in that December time in 97, the George Lindsay Television and Film Festival, which will feature Tuscaloosa native Tom Sharona's uh, the director of NBC's TV show News Radio as the keynote speaker during April the 10th through the 11th, a 1998 event. It, this is uh, it's great. The uh, goes on to say basically that the film festival was supported and uh, by a grant 
from Huntsville, Alabama, businessman Woody Anderson. He runs the Ford Place, or he ran the Ford Place here in Huntsville, Alabama, uh, and sponsored by UNA, uh, the UNA Dis Department of Communications and Theater. Uh, we're involved in this. So it goes on and it describes the things uh, that basically they were really wanting to be able to do with this event. And one of the things that it says here, it's a quote from George. He says, I hope that we find lots of new Billy Bob Thorntons with this festival. There are a lot of undiscovered talent. There is a lot of undiscovered cat talent out there. And I hope this will be the platform for them to show what they can do and then go on to Hollywood. I'm proud to be a part of it, Dr. Lindsay said. Now, as you know, George uh, received a degree there at UNA. Anyway, so I, I'm not going to read that press release uh, more than that. It's a, it's a pretty neat thing that you can see here. Uh, but I want to move on. Uh, if you want to see it, there will be a link in the show notes, by the way. You can go and read this. There's a lot of history uh, available uh, because there was another thing that they put out in February, and this was the one I, I really wanted to brag on, because this is uh, this is pretty neat. This is uh, February the twelfth, nineteen ninety eight. Doctor George Lindsay wows the Alabama legislature with humor and plugs film festival. It was a press release from the again from the Office of University Relations. Uh, Mister Jarnigan did this. He said. Uh, it says this, the Alabama legislature convened in a joint session recently to honor the University of North Alabama alumnus George Lindsay for his humanitarian work over the years and to hear the announcement of a new film festival at his alma mater. Uh, Lindsay regaled uh, the, the salon, the folks there in the legislature, with clean homespun humor that, was, that has been his trademark of his career as an actor and a comedian, particularly as the character of Goober Pyle. Uh, on two different television shows, uh, The Andy Griffith Show and Hee Haw. And of course, they didn't say it here, but uh, maybe RFD. The Entertainer also outlined for the legislature details of the first, remember this is the 20th year, the first UNA George Lindsay television and film festival to be held April the 10th through the 11th of 1998. This is what I thought was interesting. State Senator Bobby Denton of Tuscumbia and State Representative Nelson Starkey of Florence sponsored a proclamation from the Senate and the House honoring the entertainer, George Lindsay. Denton, Bobby Denton, the state senator here in Alabama, was the first person to cut a record, and the record was called a fallen star, in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. Starkey is a retired Navy pilot, and he attended Florence State Teachers College, which is now UNA, when George Lindsay did back in the early 50s. Uh, so they, they're talking about that. And uh, State Senator Hinton Mitchum of Albertville also acknowledged Lindsay's leadership in raising over $1.5 million for the Alabama Special Olympics with his former celebrity golf tournament in the state capital of Montgomery. Uh, so uh, this was a very big deal for George, and I know he was extremely honored. He, starting the uh, film festival was a big deal for him as well. He, after he, this goes on in this article, it says, after accepting the joint proclamation, Lindsay turned to the state house. He turned it into a com comedy club as he regaled the lawmakers with tales of growing up poor before starring in musicals on Broadway and then becoming a television star in Hollywood. George, this is a quote, he says, We weren't poor, said Lindsay, recalling his childhood and Jasper. We weren't even trash, he said. We, we used to go and visit trash on Sundays. My sister got married for the rice. He's telling these stories to the state legislature. George was awesome. Uh, this is him again, quote, One Christmas I got a box with two batteries in it. And it said, Toys Not Included. <laughs> George Lindsay said his background in Alabama gave him an advantage over other actors. He explained that it was because of his experience of, quote, going back barefoot in the summer or putting peanuts in an RC cola and making it last all day or hitchhiking from 
op to Gordo. It was those things that helped him learn about comedy and timing and uh, and people and give him char- his character that he had. Uh, the Lindsay television and film credits, other than the Andy Griffith Show and Hee Haw, will be featured during the festival, although some excerpts from those two will also be shown. The festival supported by a grant from Huntsville businessman Woody Anderson, as I mentioned, UNA Foundation and the Alabama State Council of the Arts, uh, and will feature professional and student competitions n- nationally in various forms of film and video work. Uh, so it goes on to tell you a bit more about that. But this was uh, the first press releases, guys. This was uh, 20, 20 years ago, and it's still going. They're going. So the uh, the Rerun Watchers Club, the Andy Griffith Show Rerun Watchers Club, has been involved in this since the beginning. And there is a link on our pages there at imayberry.com that has all kinds of press releases and things from 1998 up to 2003, the sixth annual George Lindsay Film Festival, uh, where we got all the press releases and everything and stored them for them. At that point, the George Lindsay Film Festival actually created their own website. I wish I had been more careful because they have not maintain an archive of all their information of the past so if you go to the lindsay film fest is what it's called lindsay film fest f-e-s-t dot com you'll see the george the official george lindsay una film festival website which is the name now they dropped the television and film it just says the this is the 20th annual george lindsay una film festival and this year, there'll be three days of screenings. So they're going to be doing a lot of screenings of movies and getting all that, you know, the movies that were submitted. So if you're in the area, you can go to these things. Now, let me give you a little bit of background information here. Uh, as we had already said, George Lindsay UNA Film Festival is hosted each year by the University of North Alabama in Florence. So this is just one of the things our great people that were the stars there on the Andy Griffith Show have done to give back to all those people that helped make them what they were. This is George. This is one of the things he did to try to do that exact thing. Uh, It goes on to say here, it's talking about uh, that UNA is in Florence. It's one of the four cities comprising the culturally rich Shoals. The Shoals is an entertainment mecca Uh, with long roots, which reach to the heart of rock and roll, southern rock, and the blues. It's the birthplace of America's First Lady of Courage, Helen Keller, the father of the blues, W.C. Handy, and the legendary father of rock and roll, Sam Phillips, who first recorded the likes of Elvis Presley, Johnny Cash, Roy Orbison, Carl Perkins, and Jerry Lee Lewis, and the list goes on and on from there. This all happened in the Shoals. The Shoals area has always been known for its creative spirit and its energy and is now building on this rich musical heritage by devoting many of its resources toward enhancing the emerging emerging film industry. Since 1998, the George Lindsay Film Festival has contributed to that effort through the exhibition and contributed to, uh, well, of independent films. I'm sorry, I got mixed up there. From across the world and appearances of many special guest stars. So there have been several guest stars, uh, including, they have been at the film festival, including Billy Bob Thornton, which you might know. Uh, You might know who Billy Bob Thornton is. Uh, Another one is Ernest Borgnine. You've probably heard of Ernest Borgnine, right? And then, of course, uh, Sling Bay co stars for Billy. Billy Bob Thornton, Lucas Black, and Natalie Canterday. Uh, they've both been there as well, in- including also character actors like Rance Howard have been there. Of course, the tie with the Andy Griffith Show is, as well. And also, uh, now, now, Rance Howard, you may not remember this. He was in Cool Hand Luke. Look for him in there. He's been in so many movies. It's amazing. And then, of course, and then Stephen Root. Now, Stephen Root was on News Radio. I don't know if you remember him, but he was also in Oh Brother, How uh, How Art Thou, 
or where art thou? I mean, he was in there. Uh, there's just been, there have been so many people that have been a part of the George Lindsay Film Festival over the years uh, that it, it's just an amazing, amazing thing. Uh, there's a whole list here that goes on. They've had stuntmen. Lee Majors has been there. Uh, over the years, George used his th celebrity status of people that knew him, that he was friends with, that he had become friendly with to draw these people to come to UNA, the University of North Alabama, uh, and be a part of the show. It was founded, uh, as we've said before, by George, and it, it's just been, it's been an amazing run of 20 years. Now, some of the people who make up their advisory, uh, you might have heard of their advisory uh, board, uh, as we look here, is uh, as we said, Natalie Canterday. She was uh, she was in uh, Sling Blade. She was also in an October Sky, Walk the Line. These are people that George knew. Uh, the next one you may have heard of is Jim Clark. Jim Clark is an author and the presiding goober of the Andy Griffith Show Rerun Watchers Club. Hey, he also wrote Goober in a Nutshell, George Lindsay's autobiography. Uh, another person who's one of the advisors is Michael Rooker. He's, uh, he was born in Jasper, Alabama and moved away in, when he was, that's the same place George was born, moved away when he was 13. But he's been in all kinds of stuff, uh, including The Walking Dead and things like that. He's uh, Mississippi burning. I mean, it's just, there's all kinds of stuff you want to see about these people. Danny Vinson, a great friend of this podcast and of George Lindsay. Uh, he, he didn't start doing a movie career or acting career until 1994. And he's been in 200 commercials. He's been on movies. He was on 42 U.S. Marshals. Uh, he just continues to appear in all kinds of movies. It's always fun to see him. Talladega Nights, The Ballad of Ricky Bobby. I mean, he, he's been in uh, a lot of movies recently, uh, including The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. I mean, that's just, it's amazing. And then also uh, Ann Wilson. Ann was, uh, she's a businessman, uh, business man. She's not a man, business lady in Nashville. And uh, she was one of George's closest and dearest uh, companions for many years before he's passed away. Uh, she's a great lady. I love her. And then, of course, Ernest Borgnine. He was a member as well. Now, Ernest Borgnine, I've told this story before, but I, met, I got to meet Ernest Borgnine at uh, George's Film Festival. He has been to at least three different occasions, been to the film festival. And, uh, and and I know it was always an honor for George. But uh, Mr. Borgnine uh, was a true friend of George Lindsay. George same back. And Mr. Borgnine would tell me, you know, when I was with him, when we were, it wasn't just me, but several people around with him, and I would call him Mr. Borgnine. And he would say, no, no, it's Ernie, Ernie. And I was like, you know, I can't, I can't call him that. So I just avoided calling him anything because I, I could not call Academy Award winning actor and just all around impressive human being, uh, Ernie. I, I just, I couldn't do it. So I, I always avoided that. But I do have a picture of Floyd, me, uh, cutting Ernest Borgnine's hair. And it's, uh, it's on my wall at work. And people come in and they see that. And suddenly me being Floyd and going around impersonating a Mayberry character seems to, uh, they just, go, wow, this is you and Ernest Borgnine? Yeah. <laughs> it just goes away. It suddenly goes from being, man, Alan's really weird, to Alan's really weird, but wow, he gets to do some cool things. <laughs> so anyway, I want to encourage you. If you're in the area, by any chance, and you're gonna, and you have an opportunity, I invite you over to the 20th annual George Lindsay UNA Film Festival. Drop me an email at floyd at imayberry.com and let me know you're gonna be there. And maybe we'll be able to meet up and say hi. It'll be fun. So they're gonna be uh, doing the presentations on Saturday night where they present the awards. They're gonna be having some sessions this year. I did. I neglected to tell you this, but this year, the uh, the the special guest for this year are uh, it's uh, Michael O'Neill and Grant Goodeve. Now, Grant Goodeve, you'll know, and he's easiest for me to tell you who he is. He was on Eight Is Enough. A lot of you folks who uh, who are my age or near it probably watched Eight Is Enough. He was also on Seventh Heaven, 
He was on there. Now, Michael O'Neill, you will uh, you may or may not have seen him. He was in the Transformers movie. He was the kind of the bad guy, actually, in that movie. And uh, he was on, there was a show that came on, a science fiction show that came on with Holly Berry uh, recently, uh, last couple of years during the summer. He was on, it's called Extant. He was on there. He's been on several, several things. But those two gentlemen will be, uh, be at the film festival and will be having uh, sessions, question and answer sessions. Uh, Mr. O'Neill's is on uh, Friday uh, at 7 o'clock. And uh, Mr. Goodies is at 2 p.m. on Saturday. Both are free and open to the public. So if you're in the area and you have any interest in these particular gentlemen, this will be a, a really good opportunity for you to come in and say hi and probably get a picture. And at least uh, at least uh, get to hear what they have to say. Uh, the uh, George Lindsay Film Festival, I've been uh, several years, and they have had in the past uh, sessions uh, where they had film professionals come in and actually teach, not really teach, but have panel sessions where students could ask questions about how you score a film, how how the stunt men, how that action is done. So anyway, it's just, uh, it is amazing and a lot of fun. So I'm just glad to be a part of it. And I uh, just uh, am still amazed with George for the amazing work he's done all right guys uh we're not done we're not done we've got to head over now and get our special report from our friend randy turner so let's go for this week in mayberry history welcome to this week in mayberry history a report by special correspondent randy turner of the gomer and cooper pile comic book literary guild of the mayberry historical society Oh, I forgot to hit the second part. Here you go, Randy. February the 24th marked 11 years since we lost the comedic genius Don Knotts. But I know we are all thankful for the joy he gave us, especially in the role of Barney Fife. Legendary actor, director, producer, and writer Sheldon Leonard was born on February the 22nd, 1907. While many people contributed to the creation and evolution of Mayberry, Sheldon is often considered to have been the one to actually create the show. While producing the Danny Thomas show, Sheldon was approached by Andy Griffith's talent agency, which led him to create what became the Andy Griffith Show. Sheldon also directed the pilot, the first episode of the series, and the credits sequences. As an actor in film, Sheldon specialized in playing heavies, such as Nick the Bartender in the Potterville version of Bedford Falls in It's a Wonderful Life. A New York City native, he often made use of his trademarked heavy New York accent, especially when playing gangsters, such as Harry the Horse in the musical Guys and Dolls. On radio in the Jack Benny program, he was the racing aficionado who always began his conversation with Jack by saying, Hey, bud, come here a minute. In television, he starred in the series Big Eddie and voiced Linus the Lionhearted in the cartoon series of the same name in the 1960s. Sheldon was a successful producer of TV series, producing not only Make Room for Daddy, later The Danny Thomas Show, and The Andy Griffith Show, but others, including Gomer Pyle, USMC, The Dick Van Dyke Show, and the first American TV drama to feature a black actor as one of the leads, I Spy. One of his three Emmy Awards was for serving as executive producer of the 1969 series, My World and Welcome to It, based on the writings of James Thurber. In addition to his directing work on our favorite show, he directed episodes of many other series, including directing four of the first eight episodes of Lassie. The other two of his Emmy Awards were for direction on The Danny Thomas Show. Sheldon truly was one of the most influential artists in television history. And a final piece of fun trivia that has to be mentioned is that Chuck Lorre, 
the creator of the Big Bang Theory TV series, named the characters Sheldon and Leonard in honor of Sheldon Leonard. That's it for this week. As always, thanks for listening, and remember to take Andy's advice and go out there and act like somebody. All right. Thank you, Randy. Thank you for that great report. Every week he gives us a good report. If you enjoy This Week in Mayberry History, you can head over to the Gomer and Goober Pyle Comic Book Literary Guild. I hope I said that right. And you can see a daily dose of Mayberry History. It's this today in Mayberry History. Or if you uh, would like, you can get an email from from Randy if you go to turnersgrade at gmail.com and ask him to send you an email. He will to remind you each week, turnersgrade at gmail.com. Thanks again to Randy. I want to thank all of you guys for showing up and being here and part of the show. I hope you, uh, I hope you understand that how much I, I really, really uh, appreciate George Lindsay and all he's done over the years. He's a great guy. I really miss him. I'm excited to be able to go over this weekend and be a part of the George Lindsay Film Festival, even in a very small way, and just to share some of the love that you have and I have for George Lindsay, our friend. So, folks, I'd love to hear from you. You can give me a call at 888-684-8415. You can email me at floyd at imayberry.com or drop by at waiting.com and give me a message there. Uh, you guys have a great Mayberry week, and we'll see you next time right here on Two Chairs, No Way.